It's hard to overstate the cultural impact stock car racing has made across the state of North Carolina. What is now the largest racing series in America evolved from these windy, mountainous roads. So much of North Carolina racing history is still alive today. Let's explore the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. The Moonshine and Motorsports Trail aims to highlight North Carolina's rich cultural history. How stock car racing, one of its largest industries, evolved from humble bootleggers. I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina today to visit the NASCAR Hall of Fame, which will be our first stop on the trail. But other notable sites like Rockingham Speedway, North Wilkesboro Speedway, Charlotte Motor Speedway, the North Carolina Museum of History, Historic Okanichi Speedway, Stone Mountain State Park, and more are all part of the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. Over the next few videos, we'll be visiting many of those historical sites, learning quite a bit about the state's history history, NASCAR's history. It's going to be a fantastic time. You can find out more about the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail if you click the link down in the description below. <sighs> For now though, now that I've gotten a fresh breath of air, it's time to begin our journey. Ugh. First stop of the day, RFK Racing. If you're in the Charlotte area, you've got to check out at least one of the many race team shops in the greater area. Most of them have some sort of small museum or at the very least a gift shop. Roush is probably my favorite shop to visit for very personal, very biased reasons. Ooh, I hadn't seen the new sign out front. The new fountain, I love it. Let me show you why I like this place so much. Here it is, Matt Kenseth's 2012 Daytona 500 winning Ford Fusion. Still wrapped in its Best Buy colors. Looks clean, looks like it's ready to hit the racetrack and dominate once again. I vividly remember staying home from school that Monday because the race was supposed to be restarted around like noon, then it kept raining, kept raining. I ended up missing a whole day of school for no reason. The race didn't end until early Tuesday morning. The jet fire, the lap two crash, you name it, but it was all worth it to see my guy Matt Kenseth win his second Daytona 500. A, a lot of people, well, not a lot, but a good handful of drivers have won one Daytona 500. Very few have won multiple. Matt Kenseth joined that exclusive list. I love that this car is here. If they ever move this car, honestly, they're gonna have to like send me a tracking number so I can find it. <laughs> this is why I gotta stop by every single time I'm in the Charlotte or Concord area just to see this car. What a beautiful piece of history. Very personal, very sentimental, to me at least. I haven't seen this car here before, but it looks fantastic. It's from 2003. The gold was to commemorate Mark Martin's 500 consecutive starts. An Iron Man, look at this car, you can even see. Still got some battle scars on the side. This car is like Iron Man. That's awesome. Just ran into uh, Elijah and Justin here. Uh, these guys said they're gonna show us where the pit crew guys work out. Maybe see a little pit crew practice. Is that okay? Am I intruding? Absolutely. Yeah. No, you're our crew member for the day. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. What? What? I feel like maybe Jackman because I'm tall. Or no, Gasman. Gas, right? gas, gas, gas man. Elijah and Justin giving me a peek inside the RFK Performance Center. This is pretty clean. I love the big sign up front. Tons of machines. I love they've also got screens showing replays of pit stops from last year. Eat, drink, sleep, the pit stops. Just behind the uh, Roush Museum, getting a peek at pit stop practice. There's a cup car over there right here. Oh my gosh, it lives. The cursed Roush 60 car. Still here being used for Xfinity Series pit crew practice. That's pretty cool, I've never been this close to practice. Apparently they go work out in the new RFK Performance Center just down the parking lot over here, and then they come practice pit stops. Apparently they do this basically every day of the week, leading up to the race, after the race, rain or shine. They got this nice little cover here. Pretty cool peek behind the curtain right there. Ooh, you can still hear them doing a pit stop practice off in the distance. <sighs> Since I'm here in the Concord, North Carolina anyways, I might as well pay a visit to the Lionel Diecast Retail Store. Located here in the Concord Mills Mall, just down the road from Charlotte Motor Speedway. Hey, I'm pretty sure this means I'm in the right place. Here we go. Ticked away behind all the impressive model trains is the NASCAR Diecast section of the Lionel Store. Oh my gosh. 
There are too many shelves. I, I need to stop. This first one, the GoPro car, one of the best paint schemes I have ever seen. Saw it race at Martinsville last year. I wish, I hope they bring that one back or something similar to it. A handful of 2023 die casts are on the shelves here as well, including the special 75th anniversary die cast. Just got word that they're gonna be doing another one of their poker runs in this store during Coke 600 race weekend. And they're also celebrating the fifth anniversary of this store during the uh, Roval weekend later this fall. I just saw a guy walk out of here with like eight of these cars bundled up in his arms. Could've used one of these baskets, but check out this collection. Man, a NASCAR fan, a collector could get lost in here. Always great to stop by the Lionel store. Now we gotta head into town. We've got a date with Destiny. Welcome my friends to the NASCAR Hall of Fame. The first official stop on the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. Located right here in the heart of Uptown Charlotte, the NASCAR Hall of Fame has been entertaining fans for over a decade now. This is the perfect way to kick off our North Carolina tour. It's the 75th anniversary of NASCAR, so I can't wait to see what special exhibits, what special cars they may have on display inside. It's been a couple years since I was last here, so I'm excited to see what has changed. Oh yes, we are here. When you first walk into the NASCAR Hall of Fame, you're met by Glory Road, which features a very interesting assortment of historic NASCAR race cars representing NASCAR's 75 years of history. We're gonna explore the many different nooks and crannies of the NASCAR Hall of Fame today with some help from Winston Kelly. That's right, the one and only. Truly a once in a lifetime opportunity. Appreciate the NASCAR Hall of Fame making that happen. Let's go, uh, let's see if we can meet up with him and he can tell us about these incredible historic race cars. So with NASCAR 75th, uh, we wanted to be able to highlight that with a specific exhibit here in the Great Hall that was just unveiled, or just actually just opened or installed yesterday. This exhibit was really exciting to put together. You know, we started out talking about beach racing, but we wanted to bring in vehicle and other innovations in the sport. Uh, you know, how did it become an American sport? You know, different moments in history, but also talking about that family heritage and, and fans yeah. and champions. I see some like tape and stuff on the yeah, Tony car, car, so that had to the run. one car in the exhibit. That car is truly straight from the track. Oh yeah. So Tony Stewart won the championship. Barely been touched. Yeah, at all. But is that his Homestead car? I, yep, I guess there's probably a sign is. over there. That's his Homestead wow. Miami car. It went from Miami to his private collection, um, to the Hall of Fame. We've used it in a couple of different exhibits. So that car, uh, we don't take anything on or off of it. Yeah. Um, that is truly, it's real and authentic and untouched. Um, four other ones are authentic, but very restored. Yeah. Um, and then the Glenn Wood car is a recreation, but the Wood brothers made that recreation. And Leonard Wood, wow. who helped build the original car, uh, built this car. So, you know, there's interesting little touches. If you notice the front wheel is aqua blue with wide white walls, that's because that day at the race, they needed a different size tire and they went out and they grabbed two wheels <laughs> off of a 58 Edsel I and see. threw so it on there. So, so they recreate it to match that uh, exactly. real story. Yeah, down to the stickers, down, and they were <laughs> meticulous. So the S37, they must have a photograph of that on that windshield. Um, so they, they are very meticulous in their restoration. So it is a truly authentic recreation, as authentic down to nuts and bolts and Leonard Woods touches on it. We change out Glory Road every three years, and okay. it's got a particular theme to it every three years. And this particular Glory Road, we wanted to show the breadth and depth of NASCAR. It's probably our most eclectic that we've ever had, yeah. and tells multiple whether it's car stories, track stories, people stories, family stories. We've got eight different divisions here, two divisions that aren't in existence anymore. Uh, the old Daytona or Goodies Dash series, yeah. and the convertible division. We've got a Canadian series car for the first time, a late model car. One that's very interesting is the Adam Petty car because we wanted wow. to tell about the family traditions and mm -hmm. the, the background there. Uh, and Adam was the first fourth generation athlete in any sport oh, yeah. in the United States. And when we had this concept and a different car as an option, I called Kyle just because I've known him and, and done a lot of things with him and said, we would, we'd love to have an Adam car on here. Are you good with that? Not only was he good, he said, I would like for you to use one of ours. He wow. said, we've got most all of Adam's cars. And that being able to tell that family story and how it went from Lee to Richard uh, to Kyle 
and now to Adam and, and just to see his reaction when he came and, and the emotional reaction there, I think uh, that was pretty special. Another one that I think is very interesting is the Daryl Waltrip car when he drove for DEI. Mm -hmm. That he and Dale were, as he said, frenemies for a long yeah. time. That they may not have seen eye to eye. And when Dale asked him to fill in for Steve Park, it really meant something to Daryl. And when he ran so good and led so much of the race at Pocono that year when he was in that car, he was as emotional getting out of that car as any of the wins. And I think he ended up yeah. finishing sixth that time. Uh, and Daryl could not have been more excited that, that Dale had given him that car. And he said it proved to him he could still race. And mm -hmm. it proves that connection within the industry that while they may be competitors on the racetrack, when one needs somebody else, that happens. And it helps tell a very unique story that people don't know about behind the scenes, you know. And there's so many different examples of that where teams or families have not seen eye to eye, but they jump in and help yeah. each other. And how much that car meant to Daryl uh, and, and I would say Dale Jr. in the same way. You probably heard the story that when Richard Maurice and Dale Inman were meeting with Andy Granatelli and talking mm -hmm. about the sponsorship with STP, they got to the end. And uh, Andy says, well, you know, well, we're going to need the car to be red. <laughs> and Richard said, well, we're petty. Blue. <laughs> yeah. So and they kind of went back and forth. And, and Dale and Maurice actually left uh, and went to the next race, which was in California. And Richard stayed overnight. And they worked out the deal where it would be red or day glow, orange down the side and a little bit over the top. Uh, and I was standing uh, with my father, who worked in racing at the time back. Uh, this is in 72. No, 72 when the first full year that they had the STP sponsorship and some people were talking to Richard and he said that Andy told him, said every time I see that car it gets prettier and prettier. And Richard said, and every time you see it it gets bluer and bluer. <laughs> and what he was talking about, if you look at some early pictures of this car, yeah. it was red all the way to the end on both ends. So it would creep back oh, a little bit of sneaky. Blue but they still uh, had the STP Day Glow Orange in it as well. So they, and, and they really had a fun relationship with it. Uh, Andy and Ralph Salvino who worked for STP and, and Richard and the family. Uh, but there's so much more behind this car uh, and, and Richard's heritage. And then a few people know that uh, they actually drove a Pontiac one year and he actually drove a Wrangler car that wasn't a number three. So this kind of tells that story as well from 1981. And Bobby Labonte being the first one to win what is now Xfinity when it was a Bush Series championship and the Cup Series championship, that's one out of his collection to be able to show that progression and show that era of the Bush Series cars. You can't overlook the role of drivers and crew chiefs and how they come together. It's that yeah. package on top of it. So, you know, while this isn't maybe the most known Jimmy Johnson car, we're really using it to talk about the relationship that Chad Knauss and Jimmy Johnson had that leads to that success, that leads to that championship. So, you know, we use every car in a different way, um, sometimes in unexpected ways. I and mean, this is the all-star winning car, so we thought it was great. It's an all-star duo, you know. It, yeah. It lends itself and, to tell that story. Jimmy and Chad won, I don't know how many times at Charlotte. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, Dale Jr. is most mm. of the driver awards, the Hall of Famer wins in the Xfinity Series, two championships, wins in the Cup Series, but going on to be a broadcaster and a car owner. Uh, and yeah. it's a late model car that Josh yeah. Berry drove. And that tells the story of people's perseverance. And it didn't, Josh Berry didn't just get there. But one of the interesting things when I took a, a snapshot of this and sent a text to Dale and Kelly just to show them here, Dale was more excited about this car <laughs> than he was this sure, car yeah. and just very proud to have it and how he's helped people's career yeah uh, and, and that's really what we're trying to do here with this car is to show how dale is so much more than just a driver that there's that so is much true. more that he's contributed to the sport you could put any you could put a tv booth a podcast studio like he's done it all you could put all that up here <laughs> well you talked about the last glory road exhibit and it being about champion you know, yeah dale picked the theme that's right i remember him, that to be our curator uh, on it. So what does that involve? So we, you know, picking a theme, and then once we have a theme, picking the cars. Uh, and when he said, have you ever done one on just cup champions? And we said, no, he says, what I want to do. And the thing that we found fascinating is after you got through the, the three seven-time champions, there weren't but two 
guitars that he selected that were his contemporaries. Hmm. Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart. Yeah. But as many people that he was a part of helping, you know, you had Mark Truex Jr., Brad Keselowski. Because, yeah, exactly, others. that's a good point. He, he was any more interested in the earlier years yeah. and paying homage to those folks than his contemporaries. No disrespect to them, but that's how much he genuinely appreciated mm -hmm. the, the history of the sport. This one helps tell multiple stories. Oh yeah. Laser. When he paid homage to Wendell Scott in 2015, you know, he had won his first race in 2014 mm -hmm. at Martinsville and then won again the next year. In this paint scheme, Wendell yeah. Scott paint scheme. The uh, Toyota from the uh, Goodies Dash, Daytona Dash, is their first championship car. Correct. That Toyota had. We reached out to the Toyota Museum mm -hmm. and Toyota said, our first championship is not the truck or Xfinity or Cup. Our first championship is in the Goodies Dash. <laughs> and we went, well, that's interesting. We've never had one of those. And to be yeah. honest, most folks don't even really know about that series unless you've been around for a while and, and focused in on it. I remember, I, I think it was Brandon Jones did a throwback to that a couple years back at Darlington. Yep. yep. The other sort of side effect of the picture that, that Winston shared with Dale Jr. is it, it went on social media and that car was in the background and the Canadian fan response. <laughs> yeah. You know, Dale Jr. was talking about the Josh Berry car, but you could not see the Canadian car, um, and WeatherTech got really excited. Uh, yeah. So it was just really, it was neat to see that energy. Um, you know, we're used to people being engaged, whether it's the Cup Series or the Modifieds here in the States. Um, but boy, the reaction on social media to that car really, um, it took me by surprise. That's great. Uh, you know, so it's great to know that there's this huge fan base north of the border um, that really were very excited yeah. to see that car. I mean, it speaks to how NASCAR has evolved or has grown, I should say, yeah. past just being a regional sport in you know, all these Absolutely. decades. It's and the fan base up there is just as passionate as the fan base here in the States. So it's been a lot of fun having it up there. We're now going to move past Glory Road and are going to check out the Hall of Honor, which honors the most recent NASCAR Hall of Fame inductees, including a little special someone. I'm talking about one of NASCAR's newest Hall of Famers, Matt Kenseth. Represented here by his first ever Bush Series win car. I used to see this at his uh, museum up in Wisconsin. So that's so the Lycos car that was Matt kind of saying like, hey, that that's cool. That was all Matt and Matt. And it surprised us, you know, it surprised us like it'll surprise a lot of fans. We're like, okay, but you know, Daytona 500 wins, championship, <laughs> and that's the car. And literally what he said to us, he goes, without that car, I don't have a career. Without my career, I'm not in this room. There's several over the years that jump out to me. Kevin's probably got some. Junior Johnson wanted his presidential pardon. It's the only thing that he said, I really want that in there. Richard Petty wanted his uh, presidential medal of freedom. Neither one of those things have anything to do with him being on the racetrack. Yeah. Jeff Gordon wanted the jacket that he wore when he was on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> So, you know, you have those interesting ones. Teresa wanted for Dale Sr. a pair of boots, racing boots, and a pair of Prada shoes, if I remember correctly, to show that he was just as comfortable on the farm uh, as he was in the boardroom. Oh my gosh, they've got the commercial. From October through induction, you know, end of January, that was in the basement. <laughs> rest of the collection and we would open up the door to the collection storage and there'd be this mannequin standing there <laughs> which as many times I saw it I'd sort of forget and open the door and, and do a little jump and realize oh no gosh. it's still just a mannequin so I had one of those Gatorade bottles yep. 2013 I had one of those and I after I drank it I left it on my desk like empty bottle that's crazy this is kind of emotional for me I've been a Matt Kenseth fan as long as I've been a NASCAR fan honestly so to see him in the NASCAR Hall of Fame, getting this kind of recognition, it's awesome. It's what being a fan is all about. So I'm really happy. Just a couple months after the induction ceremony, we were able to come down, visit, check it out, see firsthand his exhibit, his little uh, pillar thing that's gonna go along this back wall. It's just special. Well-deserved, well-deserved. Really cool exhibit. Of course, Herschel McGriff, Kirk Shelmerdine, also in the uh, Hall of Honor, the Ring of Honor, whatever it's called now, uh, as two of the other most recent inductees into the Hall of Fame. Surreal. They've also got some more modern sections that are being updated that should be open in time for the uh, Coca-Cola 600 weekend. We're not yet ready to talk about what we're getting because that's still under wraps and it's really exciting. Um, we're gonna have a real showstopper of a piece here that I'm really excited that fans see that really go to that behind the scenes, how was the car get developed? Daniel Suarez's taco pinata, yes! 
There is so much to see down here. Unfortunately, we don't have time to look at everything because Winston and Kevin have some cool things to show us upstairs. We are here to talk about Moonshine, Motorsports, NASCAR's beginnings, some of their roots perhaps. The NASCAR Hall of Fame has a really cool exhibit just over here. That's like Babe Ruth designing, building, delivering, and installing one of the first exhibits in Cooperstown that opened in 1939. He is our most iconic and recognizable moonshine. And he also corrected me once when he heard me say, somebody asked if it would work. And I said, no. He said, oh, no, no. It's just not currently operational. <laughs> if you would let me, I could fire it up. So we have a, a fully operational moonstein, moonshine still behind glass. Designed and built by Junior Johnson. And it was neat. The next year, we went up to his house to get artifacts for his uh, his Hall of Honor display. And there was a photograph. And, and I picked it up because I like the car in it hanging in his house. And it was from the early 1930s. And it's an old car in front of a house with a bunch of boxes out in front of the house. And he goes, you know what that is? And I said, no, sir, I don't. He goes, that's my dad's house. Wow. He goes, his dad is on record of still having the largest moonshine bust, at least in North Carolina. So, and it was just a big, you know, and what happened was that, you know, it was a business and his father was watching the supply and demand. And so what he did was he had stocked the house full of whiskey because there was too much supply at one point and the prices were bottoming out. So he was controlling supply and demand. You know, these are, you know, it, this is a very intelligent business. Yeah. This is, you know, something that was going on. Um, and somebody in the community tipped off the revenuers and said, you know, Mr. Johnson's house is full of whiskey. And, <laughs> but he was tipped off and, and, you know, he avoided getting caught that day at least. Um, and it was just really interesting that there's this photograph that wasn't in Junior's house of, of, his, of the outside of his, his father's home, but just the biggest wow. whiskey bust in North Carolina. Junior Johnson's first win trophy from North Wilkesboro. He grew up in Wilkes County, so that's pretty special. If you haven't seen the movie, The Last American Hero, I think it stars Jeff Bridges playing basically Junior Johnson. It's a little over dramatic, but it really gives you a peek into the early racing world, moonshine running, Junior Johnson, his family connections to it. Many of those moonshine runners became some of NASCAR's earliest competitors. Drivers. They would compete in NASCAR sanctioned races once uh, Big Bill France formed NASCAR at the Streamline Hotel in the late 1940s. There is just so much to see and do here at the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I wish we had more time. It's so weird to see one of these uh, fan vision devices <laughs> in, the, in a museum. That's gonna do it from the NASCAR Hall of Fame. I know we jumped around quite a bit in this video. A huge thank you to Winston and Kevin for spending their time sharing some stories, some additional insight, not only into the history of these exhibits, but also how they came to be, how they got here into the NASCAR Hall of Fame. This was truly an unbelievable experience. I hope you all enjoyed following along. There's so much to do in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina, area if you're a NASCAR fan. This is just the first of several stops we'll be making across North Carolina, part of the Moonshine and Motorsports Trail. It's about time I hit the road. Not in this though. I wish I could drive this to our next uh, our next location. May not get the best gas mileage, but that would be that'd be pretty sweet. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.